Well, hi there, everybody. This is Mr. Wells. Today, we're going to be doing our very first lab in earth science, which is uh, our practice lab, Introduction to Data Collection. So today, we're not going to be doing a whole lot of actual earth science. Really, what we're going to be doing is getting used to some of the devices and the equipment that we use in this class um, for our future labs. So this should be a pretty simple lab where we're just going to be getting used to the ba basics of what it takes to do an earth science lab. So the first thing that I want you to do is to go into Schoology, go into our Earth Science um, Schoology page, and under Topic 1 Labs, there should be a folder for Topic 1 Labs, let's go to our Practice Lab Introduction. So this is just a raw PDF of our lab worksheet. This is what we're going to fill out and turn in to complete the lab. So the first thing to do, because you can't write on it like this, is to go to your upload and we're going to upload this to Notability. All right so once you get it into Notability we're going to be ready to do the main setup for this lab. So this lab doesn't have a whole lot of equipment that we need to use. I grabbed two 400 milliliter beakers you can use any size beaker for this lab, but just make sure they're two of the same kind. I have a temperature probe that we use for our LabQuest devices. It can be found in the front of the room by the lab materials. I have our LabQuest, which we're going to be using for most labs in this class. We're going to talk about the LabQuest in a little bit. And then our iPad. You're going to need your iPad for the um, lab worksheet to complete the lab worksheet. So at this point, we're going to talk about uh, the LabQuest device before we actually get started on the lab. These LabQuest devices are actually super handy and they can do a lot of things. Today, we're going to be measuring temperature with the LabQuest device. Just a couple basics about these devices. One of the most important things, if you go into the connections button right here, you need to be on 192 secure. 192 secure for our network. Uh, if we do that, our LabQuest device is actually going to be able to speak with our iPad, which is really important because we're actually going to be doing our graphing on the iPad. Our final graphs are going to be done on the iPad. The home screen here takes you home. Uh, a couple more things I was noticing that when I was tapping here, uh, the calibration wasn't working super great. So what I'm going to do is hold the home button for about five seconds. And that's going to prompt me to calibrate the screen. So I'm just going to touch my stylus on these pluses. And it should be a lot better calibrated. So it should be much more um, fine-tuned to my stylus here. Uh, one of the only other things that we really need to know how to do on here is to shut off the LabQuest device when we're done. So if I go into System, um, there's a couple uh, menu options that we don't really use um, unless you want to change the uh, time and date. Uh, it is actually not 9.45 right now, so that's something I'll have to do in a little bit. Um, but that's not important. The important thing on this screen is, is how to shut down. So you can shut down here. So Home, System, and shut down when you want to shut down the LabQuest device. And they should be shut down at the end of labs. Um, the other uh, important thing that we're going to be doing, especially for today, is the LabQuest app. We'll come back to this, but this is our LabQuest app. This is where all of our sensors are going to do readings and everything for the LabQuests themselves. Uh, the other thing we're going to need um, is the graphical analysis app for the iPad. We're going to get that in iTunes U, actually. So if I go to iTunes U, I already have it up. Um, most of you are probably here in the library. This is where we find the video. Um, but if you go into materials up here, go down to apps. There's a few apps that we're going to be using today. Download Vernier Graphical Analysis. Floor 1 we'll use in the future. You can download that now if you want, but we're not going to be using that today. That'll be used first in Lab 2, actually. The 
Before we actually start the lab two, we can actually answer most of the questions in this first page. Actually, it looks like we can answer all of them. The first and most important thing to do when you start a lab is to write your name, Mr. Wells. I don't have any partners, I'm working here by myself. Um, but make sure to put your name and also your partner's names. Everyone is gonna have to fill out a lab sheet. Uh, everything in here can be done using the pencil, so you can pencil in all your answers here. Um, or you can type them if you want them to be neater, if that's easier for you. Uh, I'll accept either. Um, so we can actually answer the first few questions here. What network should the LabQuest 2 device be on? We talked about that. That should be on uh, 192 Secure. How do you fix the LabQuest 2 screen if it's not responding to touch very well? Well, that happened to us. You actually just have to recalibrate the screen. So you can either hold the home button on the LabQuest for five seconds, or you can also do that through the system settings. We did that earlier in the video. How do you turn the LabQuest 2 device off? Uh, we did that too. You go to the home screen, system, and then uh, power down. And then when should you turn the LabQuest 2 device off? When you're done with the lab or when you're done using the LabQuest 2 device. Uh, and then what app do you need to view the lab data? Um, that's the Vernier Graphical Analysis. So once you have that downloaded from the iTunes U store, that's your Graphical Analysis app right here. And then who should do the write-up? This is really important. Everyone should do the write-up. Everyone in your lab group should be doing their own write-up. You shouldn't be sharing one lab PDF between the two or three of you. All right, so the first thing you should do when you actually start the lab procedure is to fill up two beakers of water. So the first beaker right here, I filled up with um, cold ice water. Ice you can actually get at this um, cooler, which should always be in the front of the room from now on, full of ice. And then this beaker right here is filled up with hot water. So you should have one beaker filled with hot water, one beaker filled with cold water. All right, so on the second page of our lab worksheet, the learning target purpose or objective of part one of this lab is gonna be to learn how to use the time-based mode on our LabQuest 2 device. So if I cancel out of this, um, this is on our LabQuest device app. So to go back to their home LabQuest app, it's important before you start doing anything further to hook up your temperature probe. So hook up your temperature probe into channel one, temperature probe. Leave it to the side for now. Once it's hooked up and once you're seeing a reading, I'm seeing 23.3 degrees Celsius, which looks right. I'm gonna go to time-based. When I mean time-based, there's also other settings in here, but keep it on time-based. Um, our rate here is gonna be 0 0.5 samples per second. And I'll have our duration be, let's just say a minute. So 60 seconds. Before we start taking our measurements, we want to get to into our graphical analysis app. And we want our LabQuest 2 device to actually talk to our graphical analysis app so that you're gonna be seeing a live readout of the, your graph on the iPad versus here. You'll see it on both, but we want it on your iPad. So we're gonna to go to that graphical analysis app that we downloaded. Graphical analysis you can find it in iTunes U under the apps in our course page. We're gonna do new experiment. When you try to do a new experiment, it's gonna ask you to select a source, uh, do data sharing, and then what we're actually gonna do um, is go into the connections really quick in here. You see a, a IP address. We're actually just gonna take a picture of the QR code for that. So go into camera. And actually take a picture of this QR code. It should go pretty fast. And then you'll have your IP address here. Just hit the connect button and it should connect. So now in theory, we're gonna be getting a live reading based off of what we measure on here, on our iPad right here. 
All right, so what we want to do now is put the temperature probe in our ice water here. The temperature is going to drop pretty rapidly. Make sure as soon as we do this, you're going to want to hit play. So for the first 10 seconds, the time is actually recorded right down here. For the first 10 seconds, keep it in this cold water. And then at 10 seconds, move it over into the warm water. And so we'll just let this run for the full 60 seconds. Uh, it's going to produce a nice graph. If you look, if this is going right for you, it should also be graphing right now onto your graphical analysis. Please let me know if it's not communicating with your iPad right now. You should be seeing two of the same graph running. All right, so once your 60 seconds are up, you should be getting a graph that looks kind of like this. A um, couple things you can do with this. Um, if you're doing multiple runs, you can actually change the runs by clicking on the left column over here. Um, it's possible to manipulate this graph pretty much any way you want. Um, right now, we're going to look at a couple different ways um, to record data using the Graphical Analysis app. So probably the best way here um, to find data on a short time scale like this, this is going to be method one on your second page, is to actually just manually find the temperature based on, um, on a certain time using uh, manual point finding, which you do very scientifically by pointing your finger at different parts of the graph. So it'll tell you a temperature and at what time that happened. The first uh, question on page two, uh, the first method is to find the temperature this way, the highest temperature this way. So using eyeball method, I'd say that's probably my highest point. Looks like 37.3 degrees Celsius at 36 seconds. So it happened 36 seconds into the experiment. I'll go back in here and write in 37.3 degrees and it happened at 36 seconds. I'm going to ask you to take a screenshot of each of these um, graphs. So the first one, I'll take a screenshot using the power down and the home button simultaneously. And then in Notability, you can actually just go in and add a photo. All photos. This one right here. And you can shrink that down, put it right there. So that's what you do for method one. For method two here, we're going to find the same data, but using a different method. So I'm actually in the table here. So way to get to that, if we go back to our graph, is through this square right here. There's lots of different options for viewing our data. Um, we're going to just be using table right now. So table, I'm going to look on here, and I believe that at 36 seconds is actually my highest temperature. Um, that may or may not be the case for you. Uh, based on kind of your eyeball test, I would look through these numbers, but find your highest temperature. Mine still looks like it is 37.3, just barely. So my answer is going to be the same. Again, that's not going to be the case for everybody. 37.3 at 36 seconds. So same answers. We're going to go in here, take a screenshot of this table. You can shrink that down again. So that's screenshot number two. For the final section of part one, um, the final method, method number three, 
we're going to go back into our graphical analysis. Go back to your one graph. And actually, if you click and drag, if you click and drag through the whole uh, remainder of the graph, you can actually go down to here, this button down here, and view statistics. And if you do that, uh, you're gonna see a min and max. So again, for me, um, just because I had that really high peak, this is gonna be the same temperature. Um, but this gives you a statistical analysis. So as you can see, my minimum temperature 15.8 degrees, my maximum temperature was 37.3 degrees. It's just another way to do a uh, quick analysis on the lab quest. It might take a few seconds to get that to stretch out, um, but once you do, go down to here, statistics, and you can find the maximum value that way. And while that's highlighted with the statistics portion, take your final screenshot and make sure to write your numbers down again in this worksheet right here and insert your screenshot. For these part one um, questions, I'm gonna let you do these on your own. So for the Majority of these labs, I'm gonna walk you through the entire procedure, um, maybe with a little bit less hand-holding than we had in this one. Um, and then I'm gonna leave you on your own to answer the questions. Please make sure to come up to me. I'll be going around the classroom, but if you have any questions on these questions, come ask. We're gonna go to part two, events with entry, which is pretty similar to what we're gonna be, or what we were doing in part one. Um, but with a different mode. We're not going to be using that time-based mode anymore. We're going to be using events with entry. All right, before we move on to part two, we're going to go into file, new. Um, if yours asked to discard, just discard your data. Um, it should be saved now onto your uh, graphical analysis on your iPad. For part two, the purpose is going to be to do a temperature-based experiment, but we're going to be using events with entry. Um, the number of columns is going to be the number of people you have in your group. So we have max three people per group in this class. Um, so you can do however many you want. If you're working by yourself, do two columns. We're going to be measuring the temperature of our hand. So we're going to, if you're by yourself, you can do the left and right hand, basically. Um, so I'm going to do two events because I'm working by myself here. Um, I'll say right. And left. Our units are going to be um, degrees Celsius. So we'll say C. All right, once we have our event name set up, we're in here, we're gonna hit play. So this is gonna give you a live temperature readout. Uh, it's not gonna be over time. And so my first value was my um, right hand, that's down here. So I'm gonna grab this temperature probe in my right hand. And you can see on here, the temperature is rising. Let it rise for a little bit, rise or fall, depending on the temperature of your hand. Um, we're gonna wanna let it stabilize, so I'm gonna let it sit here for a little bit, and then we'll come back. It looks like now my uh, temperature has stabilized, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wanna keep that data point. So keep, enter your value. The value is just gonna be one. All right, so that should save now your first events with entry point. Um, I'm gonna move the temperature probe into my left hand, hold there. We'll let that stabilize for a little bit and then we'll come back. All right, looks like my left hand temperature is stabilized. Um, so I'm just going to again hit keep. And we'll label this value as two.
All right, once I have my two points that I'm happy with here, I'll stop the um, experiment from running. So it shouldn't be giving a live readout anymore. I'm gonna go into back on my graphical analysis app. I'm gonna go to data sharing again. You don't always have to do this. Some of you, some of you might not have to do this step. If you hit new experiment, it might automatically sync. Uh, looks like mine disconnected from the internet. So what I'm gonna do really quick is go back into my connections and look at this QR code again. We'll go into camera. And it automatically synced as soon as I put it over because uh, it probably remembers it from just a few minutes ago when I was running this. So there's our points on here. Um, I'm going to have you go into table view again. So if you go into here, um, table view. Uh, our point right here, um, one is our right hand, two is going to be our left hand. So these are the temperatures of your right and then your left, or each group member, just one, two, three in order. All right, now when you're all done with that data table, you're going to take another screenshot, um, put it into your part two events with entry. There's only one screenshot for this part. Then I'm going to have you condense that data into a table down here. So I'll rewrite your temperatures in here. Take a group average. If you don't have a third group member, just cross that out. Um, and then answer a couple questions. I'll let you answer those. When you're all done, you can take the lab up to me to get it checked off. Before doing that, make sure that all of your um, materials are put away. Your lab quest is turned off and put back on the charger. Temperature probe put back on the counter or the bin that you found it, and clean out your glassware. Thanks a lot. This was lab um, zero or our practice lab.